So this is my laboratory, my, my archive of things that I've shot. I mean, I'm not, I'm really not a collector. I'm certainly not a doll collector. But I know that I can use things more than once. And this one is, oh, these are heads that I had made. Um, this was a head of me that I had made at one point. It's kind of peeling now. And I, I did one of my husband, Carol Dunham. It actually really looks like him. It's kind of creepy. And you know, you never know when you're gonna need a small head of your husband. I started using small objects and small dolls and things because I was so able to control them in my studio and also was naive enough to think that I could make pictures that would confuse people as to whether they were life size or miniature. This is a little box of babies. These are tiny metal legs, bridesmaids, plastic shoes, that's a really important one, brides and grooms, cardboard furniture as opposed to plastic furniture, plastic Japanese torsos. <laughs> I discovered the love doll in Tokyo in the summer of 2009. I was there to screen my first movie, The Music of Regret, and we were touring around, and um, one of my kids, saw a poster, like a poster this big of a life-size doll wearing a girl's school uniform. They were sex dolls, but they were so beautifully sculpted, so incredibly articulated. I thought, I've got to see these. And I had this feeling, this could really change my work if I could find a life-size doll that I could shoot with. In fact, I kind of felt like I'd been looking for that for years. I always felt that creating fiction was a great way to solidly land on a kind of fact, that I could nail it down through a fictive representation. You know, I've used everything from tiny cake decorations to the life-size love doll. And I'm so interested in toy makers' representations of women through dolls, mannequins. When I first started shooting the love doll, when I finally got it out of the box and started to set it up, my initial thought was, it's going to take many rolls of film to learn how to shoot this doll. Then I thought, wait a minute. I already know how to shoot. I've been doing this for so many years. Maybe it's more interesting to document my relationship with the doll. So I started numbering the days, and I decided that day one of shooting the doll, when I kind of had a shy relationship with it, and it was only wearing the slip that it arrived in, might be as interesting as day 31, the last day that I shot, when I had it dressed up like a very elaborate geisha. It was like having a Martian, an alien dropped into the midst, a lovely alien who had no, no idea about this culture on Earth, no idea what to wear, what to eat, where to go, what to do, and it was all on me to create that. Following the path of how I got to know the doll, how I started to buy it clothes, how I decided what it liked to eat, where it liked to sit, like creating this identity. And I never knew what I was gonna shoot until I would wake up, for instance, and say, well, today's a really green day, and this picture has to be very green. So then I would start to find a blouse and a soda and a pillow. And um, sometimes I felt like I was writing a children's book. Sometimes I felt like I was making a porn movie. So, I mean, every day was really different. I feel like the love doll throughout the series was one person, but this person, like many young women, like many women in general, inhabits a lot of personas. The, the thing was that I was creating every single one of them. But then I was also surprised by every single one of them. I never gave her a name. I never really personified her that way. I would just take the doll out to, to shoot with it. But I did feel like the photos became more and more elaborate until I ended up hiring a woman, a company. They're Japanese-based, and their job is to uh, dress women as totally authentic geisha. And so the very last photos almost returned the love doll to this Japanese tradition that I'd gotten really interested in. Japanese 
culture, cosplay, became a great source of inspiration for me. So following the Love Doll, I started working with Kigurumi um, masks, dollars. I could have these masks made um, that were like doll heads that humans could wear. I worked with those for a few years, and that led me to just work with portraits of friends where I could either paint their closed eyes or paint clothes on them. So for, for right now, I'm in human scale, and it feels like a really good place to be. You know, for me, the dolls, the mannequins, the paper cutouts, puppets, they're, they're stand-ins for humans. I've, you know, spent my adult life looking for surrogates. It's almost like the way a little kid plays and takes their doll and walks their doll through a number of scenarios. I feel like I've been doing that for 40 years.